Hi there! Um, this is uh, Simone from uh, Italy and he has, uh, is developing a game. And well, can you introduce yourself and tell something about the game you are currently developing and what game it's a sequel to? Oh, hello everyone. I'm uh, Simone from uh, Italy, Northern Italy. My nickname as a developer <laughs> I choose for myself is uh, Lord Macbeth. <laughs> And I'm the lead developer and founder of Kibo Entertainment. It's my small indie team. <laughs> Kibo means uh, hope in Japanese. We are very focused on the uh, old way of making games like uh, 18th and uh, 19th. So I will say 8 bit and uh, 16 bit uh, consoles and games. And we are developing right now Timothy and the Tower of Moo. It's the sequel of uh, our first commercial published game, Timothy and the Mysterious Forest. And uh, this is a series of video games we want to produce, uh, and uh, we are taking the concept of uh, evolving the character in each game. Each game will feature a different gameplay from, uh, from the other games of this series, and the, the main character grown up, grows up with the game, and... Uh, graphics and style evolves with the games as well. This is the concept of this uh, small series we are making right now. Okay. And you are making like a series where everything evolves. So it's like Evoland, right? Yeah. Why did you choose to do that? Uh, the tool we are using to do to make this game is uh, uh, Pixel Game Maker and View. It's not very famous, but uh, I think a lot of people will uh, uh, recognize this. Uh, it, if I say, is from the same family of RPG Maker. RPG Maker is a lot uh, more famous right now, and I I think a lot of uh, gamers. <laughs> tried it uh, the last one time <laughs> but pixel game maker and view is uh, more focused on uh, action action 2d games uh, and also i will say it's a, a powered up version of rpg maker in fact you can make uh, the same game uh, you can make uh, on rpg maker but with a lot more features and a lot of freedom but in an easy way there is a, a node uh, based uh, logic that it's very easy to compose also because i can't uh, code at all and I, and I don't want to learn because i hate programming <laughs> so <laughs> i choose uh, what i think is the best tool for people like me everyone can create an action game with the, this tool for real do you make graphics or do you only put together together the game in like the software, you put it together and you send it out? I am a level designer, game designer and story writer of this game and I can do also uh, some uh, uh, graphic uh, tweaks uh, and uh, some Photoshop editing of pixel arts. I can do uh, some video editing, some sound editing. As a, a classic game designer, I am a jack of all trades. <laughs> And I can help, uh, and I gladly help my other teammates uh, to, um, to to make their work easier. I have uh, uh, Dave; it's my artwork designer. I have Andrea; it's my pixel artist and animator. And I have uh, Francois uh, and Sebag; there are other uh, uh, musicians, freelance musicians and composers. And I, mm, I'm at the center of this. I try to coordinate everything uh, to ask them about a specific style. And I check if everything was made accordingly to the base idea and the setting of the game. Okay. What inspired you to become an indie game developer? Well, uh, it may sound uh, naive, but uh, I love video games. This is uh, the thing <laughs> I love mostly. Uh, it's uh, the biggest passion of my life since I was a child. And uh, uh, as I also do um, uh, reviews, I'm also a video Video game journalist uh, and I, I always uh, lived uh, among video games uh, I think this is my uh, my path in life so I'm trying to make uh, this passion into a real job uh, without uh, shooting too too much high <laughs> I want to keep this uh, real and I try to make the games I love and trying to sell them the best I can to achieve uh, 
what is needed to live and uh, to develop other future games as well. Yeah, it, it, it would be weird if you make one game, make enough to live, and then find a normal job because you don't want to game dev anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been working on the current game you are working on? The current game is in a demo demo stage. It's uh, about one hour of gameplay, and it was made uh, from the the last days of February, uh, and we published this uh, uh, the last day of March for the contest uh, we we are uh, competing in. <laughs> uh, so this one made in one month. This uh, current demo, but. It's important to say this demo is the evolution of the older demo we made of this game in a Game Boy style uh, in during the end of 2018. Uh, but we take we took the same concept and we expanded it uh, due to the new possibilities of this uh, new tool we are using. So one month to make this is a, a very good uh, good thing for this tool. It's a very uh, it's very comfortable to create uh, something like this in just one month using this tool. Mm -hmm. You were in a contest. Why did you uh, decide to uh, do a contest and what will it bring for you? Well, um, this, uh, this tool is not very used, as I say. And uh, the contest uh, also um, showed uh, very interesting prizes, uh, like the first grand prize of uh, around uh, 9,000 uh, heroes. And also the, judge, uh, the judges uh, involved uh, were very interesting to me. Also uh, one of my most uh, favorite uh, game designers of all time, that is Koji Igarashi from Castlevania series. And also da Daisuke Amaya is uh, the one who made the cave story that is a very famous indie success. <laughs> so I tried to um, do my best to compete in such a contest. And uh, just knowing that uh, Igarashi himself is going to play directly my game is a very big honor for me. Yeah, I can imagine that. What, <laughs> does, uh, what makes this game different from other games? Well, um, as I always say, Kibo Entertainment uh, philosophy is uh, to mix the best things from the old way of making games and the new way of making games. There are specific things that are classic from uh, games for retro games and some things that are more uh, typical to our modern age of making games. So we try to mix uh, these uh, um, specific elements uh, to create something that is uh, unique in its own style. Uh, it's a platformer, it's an action platformer, but it's not a Metroidvania because there are too many Metroidvanias, in my opinion, <laughs> around. So I try to <laughs> to stand out of the crowds. It's half cute and half creepy in style. Uh, it's uh, all, almost horror in some places, but it's also with the cute and uh, uh, chubby characters. <laughs> Uh, it has a lot of influence from a lot of other games. Uh, um, I don't try to be 100% unique because it's completely useless this day. Um, everything you can think about, uh, it was made by some, someone else or think by someone else. So it's pointless. I try to create uh, good games with a unique uh, style from themselves. This is uh, my, my, my target when I make a game. Something that people can remember and uh, enjoy this is what I want to create well that's a good thing to want to create because you are right everything has already been made once and it's just uh, yeah, an option to make something better what setbacks did you encounter during the project and do you feel like you learned anything from them well, um, starting a new tool is always challenging and always a new uh, experience. But uh, in this case, uh, it's uh, curious because uh, the first steps uh, in this uh, project were made on Construct 3. That is, uh, even if underrated as well, is uh, mostly used by solo developers. Then I decided to try um, Pixel Game Maker and View because uh, it comes from the same family of RPG Maker. And I 
I'm really used to work on RPG Maker. So I found uh, uh, less difficulty to understand the logic and some comments. I think it was a valuable learning experience because I tried a completely new way of making game mechanics, uh, like the node-based uh, system logic uh, I men mentioned before, like uh, a single action linked together by specific triggers. Like, uh, you want this animation to change if the player press up, and you change your animation to from uh, idle to climbing a ladder, for example. This is the thing I learned, uh, and uh, was valuable because uh, learning this new tool has opened a completely new world and new possibilities to me. Now I know I can create every action to the game I want with this tool. And this is very important to me. Now I feel very free to create. Yeah, if you can make everything work the way you want it, it's pretty useful. If you can advise a new indie game developer, what will you tell him? Uh, okay, this is a question I always allow to, to answer. Uh, I would tell to a new indie developer to never, never, ever let go that sparkle of passion and love for video games that brought him to, to cross uh, this uh, difficult road. Never forget that, because uh, in this market these days, it's really easy to lose your passion and become uh, a cold... Uh, machine uh, doing everything in a perfect way just to get uh, your uh, bill at the end of the month uh, or everything else. It's important for indie developers to love video games and to help each other. This, is, uh, this may sound naive as well, but I love to help other uh, developers, even for free if it's not uh, too much time consuming, because I, I think that indie developers should help each other and should love video games above all else if they want to do this. This is what I will suggest. That's a good suggestion. What do you think about the current marketing strategies in the indie game industry? It's difficult to answer today's question because there are, I think that indie developers are uh, like uh, PC configurations. <laughs> there are uh, so many different strategies and so many different people around. Uh, I know people who have uh, already achieved the success and uh, other people who are still struggling. Even if uh, some people are never, n never searched uh, actively for success. For example, I know um, Eirdorf is a creator. I greet him. Ciao, Eirdorf. <laughs> is a, a creative uh, person who made a lot of successful games, uh, but uh, they are almost uh, not uh, not uh, famous for the triple A audience or uh, for the mo mainstream audience. There are too many different strategies in the indie game industry, in my opinion, and I can't say which one is uh, the best or the worst. I think, for me, I speak for myself, the best thing I can do for as a strategy is uh, build a core uh, a core base of passionate and uh, affectionate uh, people to my products and uh, go with them over the years i want uh, i love to have uh, players who comes uh, and grow up with my games uh, and follow me uh, uh, across the years uh, this is the best strategy for for me i don't really appreciate uh, um, the business, uh, the cold business side of uh, the indie market these days, always talking about uh, pipelines, about business plan, marketing plans. I know it's useful, I know it's important, but it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> Where do you see the indie game market going in a few years? I see two, uh, two different uh, paths. Uh, one is catastrophic, <laughs> so, and the other is uh, more positive. The catastrophic one is, uh, uh, I fear we may see another uh, 1983, another collapse of the industry. Maybe it's not the same collapse, uh, because uh, the gaming market is too big now, it's too important uh, to collapse completely. But there are too many games around. 
uh, I don't remember when I read this, but uh, uh, Steam uh, releases uh, eight games each minute or something. <laughs> I don't remember when I read the, when I read this information. But even if it was uh, ten games uh, each day, is a lot of things, a lot of games. So uh, too many, too many games, uh, too many um, people trying this. Uh, it's dangerous. And also, triple A um, software houses are going to fo are following the same safe path each time, and a uh, very few try to improve, try to create something completely new. There are uh, um, series like FIFA, for example, that are going over years and years with the same things. Of course, it's a sport game, you can't change it, but they are top sellers. And the other path I see, it's um, indie game becoming uh, even more important than they are right now, and uh, start to uh, seriously to affect the bigs in the industry to follow the creative creativity and uh, that spark of passion I was uh, talking before. Maybe this is the most positive part, and I hope uh, this is what happens. Yeah, me too. It would be nice if um, AAA games have more creativity in them. Which game, either indie or AAA, would you wish you have worked on? Um, from the last years, or uh, or generally, uh, the old times. Uh, well, well, just generally, all times. Oh damn it! It's a, a lot more more difficult than. <laughs> well, I, I will say it, if I am allowed, I will say it, two two titles. One uh, ge generally speaking, and one from the last years. The one I would have loved to work uh, to work on, uh, uh, generally speaking. Uh, Probably is um, Super Mario RPG from Squaresoft uh, for Super uh, Super Nintendo console because uh, I think it's uh, very important a very important game uh, with a lot of interesting mechanics uh, and uh, one of the most uh, important titles uh, I can remember of uh, in the gaming history because to see Mario involved in a Squaresoft product was uh, very weird <laughs> for that time. And in the last, uh, for the from the, the last years, uh, I would say without doubt, uh, uh, Bloodstained, the game uh, who made uh, Koji Igarashi, the Metroidvania he made, because I think uh, it's uh, it shows clearly to all the indie developers trying to do a Metroidvania what a Metroidvania, a real, a genuine Metroidvania, has to be. Did you do any gaming education at school or did you learn the whole development process on your own? No gaming education at school for a simple reason. I'm 37 years old and in Italy the first uh, game design school opened in uh, 2009. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, for a clear reason I wasn't able to learn and unfortunately uh, my parents uh, never accepted or uh, encouraged my game development career. So I had to work uh, classic day jobs uh, like everyone else. But in 2013, I, I decided to cut this uh, sad way of life I was following and try to put uh, myself uh, heart and soul into game development. And then I learned the development process on my own. I learned the Photoshop from zero to advanced. I learned... Uh, uh, um, video editing, I learned the RPG Maker from almost zero to advanced, and I now learned the Pixel Game Maker. I did a, a bit of Unity, I can do um, 2D maps in Unity without a problem. I learned everything I can. It's good to learn new things. Yeah. So now we have a very difficult question. What is your yeah. favorite video game of all time? Oh, well, then it's even more difficult than the other. <laughs> <laughs> The other question, but, okay, but this one is to, which one do you like to play the most? So it's different. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but lucky for me, I have a, a winner because I, I think about about uh, I think about this question a lot of, a lot of times, and I have a clear a clear answer. Uh, I would say Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus is uh, for me, in my opinion one of the most uh, wonderful the most wonderful game of history because uh, it, its graphics 
were completely out of range from, uh, for, for the PS2 era. He, he uses very, Fumito Ueda uses very well fogging and colors to make uh, the, the lower capacity of memory a feature. And also the gameplay was fantastic. Uh, I never felt so powerless and so scared about fighting with uh, so big enemies. And in fact, uh, and some references from uh, Shadow of the Colossus and some idea are uh, I poured them into Timothy the Tower of Mu as well. Okay. And what is your favorite video game of this year and why? On 2020, <laughs> well, we are not uh, at the half of this year, but uh, but but I can mention mm, may I can mention two two games, one uh, indie, even if it's not an indie anymore, and uh, one triple A, maybe. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, I would say for the triple A, uh, Neo Two. Neo Two, for. Um, because I really like uh, this kind of games, even if uh, I think it has uh, its downsides. Uh, but the game itself looks great, uh, plays great, is a very satisfying action game with a lot of uh, things, uh, a lot of items, a lot of people uh, to, do, to talk with, discover places. Uh, very difficult because I love difficulty and uh, everyone who will play Timothy and the Tower of Mo will uh, learn about it too. <laughs> and about uh, the other title I would say without doubt even if uh, it's not um, as I said um, uh, an indie game uh, anymore I would say Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Because yeah I know that one. The other one I didn't know. <laughs> Well, it's simply amazing. I think the art direction is wonderful, and they did a very good job with this uh, series because uh, it's really um, it's visually compelling. You can't resist that graphics, and also the game itself is uh, carefully made, so it's clearly you, you can see clearly the passion and uh, the dedication of the developer in that product, and it works very well with me. Yeah, when I started that game, uh, I was impressed by how it looked. Yeah. I was just impressed. And I play a lot of games and a lot of indies, but Or in the Wild Forest, that game impressed me. Graphic wise, I haven't finished the game yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you will finish. You, you will love it. <laughs> I probably will. But yeah, that was my last question. I always end with, uh, with, with the gaming part. Is there other things you want to say? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> this is uh, a, another difficult question. <laughs> uh, do I have to address someone in particular? <laughs> uh, well, it's just if you want to add something, information you haven't given yet. Well, I will ask uh, the, the same thing I asked uh, before when you told me about uh, the advices to indie developers. Never lose your passion, people. It's uh, the driving energy of this industry we are creators we need to stick on this path because uh, this is uh, the spark who keep us unique and our games too because uh, if you have passion your game is unique your game is uh, very well made because if you love your game you want it to be perfect of course perfection doesn't exist but uh, perfect for you <laughs> okay this is the, the thing i would uh, say to everyone this is the uh, my way of uh, approaching this difficult uh, path into this industry. Okay, well then this was the whole interview. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it very much and thank you for your question and thank you for uh, everything uh, you do for the indie, indie market because it's very important to have people like you that uh, shut out our games, uh, that uh, retweet our games uh, to make them uh, emerge uh, from the sea and uh, let everyone look at them. Thank you.